I'm going to be trying something a little bit different in this video. It's an idea that I've had kicking around inside my head for quite some time now. Do you ever watch those TV shows where they fix something up, they repair something? For example, they'll find a car inside a barn, it's all rusty, it doesn't run, and then throughout the course of the show, they'll show you the repair process, putting it all back together, perhaps giving it a respray, and maybe at the end even giving it back to the owner as good as new. I find those shows quite relaxing, easy TV, but as you know, in life, not everything is repairable or is even worth repairing. So what if there was one of those shows when you started off watching it and you didn't know what the end was going to be? It wasn't guaranteed that they're going to be able to repair it. Would that add an extra level of jeopardy or would you feel ripped off that you didn't get that final payoff? I mean, you get it all the rest of the show, the other 50 minutes or whatever of show where they're showing you how to go about repairing stuff, taking it all apart. You just don't get that little section at the end where they do the reveal and there's a nice shiny car there. Would that be a kind of video you'd want to watch? Well, let's find out. I'd been interested in picking up a Pioneer draw loading record player for a while and this one caught my eye because of the price. It was however being advertised for parts only. But when looking at the pictures and reading the description it seemed like the only issue was with the motorised draw mechanism which wasn't opening. Now that sounded to me like a very repairable problem. I thought it might just need some new belts. So I ordered the turntable as well as a set of belts to go along with it. Unfortunately though, the turntable wasn't very well packaged and somewhere between the seller's house and mine, it appears it ran into the wrong crowd. It looked like it had been delivered by Ace Ventura, so by the time it got to me, the turntable inside the crumpled box was in considerably worse condition than when I'd bought it. The plastic face here was cracked, the controls are sitting at a bit of an angle there and the turntable drawer was only too happy to slide open on its own now. It also felt like it wasn't sitting on its runners properly. Now it really did seem like it was going to be beyond repair at this point. There was things rattling around inside it as well but I thought I'll see if I can get it working just for fun. At the very least it's going to be a way for me to practice my limited repair skills. I think my obsession with draw loading turntables goes back all the way to the 1980s. I had an Amstrad Hi-Fi system with a draw loading record player. Now I'm using the term Hi-Fi there in the loosest possible and most inaccurate sense because it was definitely was not Hi-Fi. It was an awful piece of rubbish but still after all these years I'm still fascinated with draw loading record players. You can see here we've still got some power going through to this. So they haven't completely killed it in transit so there is still some hope that I might be able to get this working. Now I can hear a motor running inside when I press the open and close button so it does seem like it needs a new belt but how much else is broken on that mechanism I don't know. I mean this plastic door should be opening and closing automatically when this rod moves backwards and forwards but something's not quite right with the way that connects up either. Well I've got to start somewhere so I thought I'll start with the motor for the draw loading mechanism. I think it's underneath this circuit board, at least it sounds like that's where it is on that side of the machine and I can hear the motor running underneath there, I just can't see it. So I thought I'll unplug all the wires that are on there, take the screws out of the circuit board, lift it up and the motor will just be underneath. I'll be able to swap the belt out quickly. Had a look and now I've ended up just getting a piece of black plastic underneath there. So I'm trying to figure out where this belt is. I couldn't see it from the bottom or from the top. I ended up downloading the service manual which was fortunately online. It seems like you have to take this cowl off the top but to get to that you have to go through a whole process of removing the front off the machine which is this plastic face here with all the buttons on it. That then enables you to get to these extra screws which you can take out which removes this door mechanism here which is like a metal surround to that plastic door as well as the rod that goes on the side to open and close that door. And once you've got that out of the way then you can lift up this whole section in the middle which enables you to get to the turntable at last but still you can't see the motor yet. You've got to take out the screws in the turntable base. That enables you to lift that off the runners and when I did that this piece of plastic fell out. Now I was trying to figure out where that came from and I realised it's from this hole here it probably got snapped off 
when it was dropped in transit it's supposed to locate in the runner on the bottom although i don't know really what it does other than just helping you put it back together because the turntable itself is screwed on to that runner as well now the belt we've finally found it on the left there with the motor when you press the button you can feel the wheel spinning at the bottom but it's not turning the bigger wheel it seems like this mechanism needs quite a bit of torque so even though the rubber belt didn't seem all that loose it is loose enough for the mechanism not to work now when you buy a set of belts for this particular turntable you get two belts you get a replacement for this and you also get another belt for the toad arm mechanism the turntable itself it uses a direct drive motor now over the years i bought a number of hi-fi components made by pioneer some of my best equipment's been made by them the ctf 1250 cassette deck the rt909 reel to reel what the heck was going on when they put this thing together this whole record player relies on this tiny little bell that's buried all the way down in the bottom of it that you have to take the whole thing apart to get to i mean why don't they just have a, a flap on the bottom that you could open up to swap that belt out yeah this was definitely not their finest hour but never mind we'll carry on putting it back together as best we can i'll put some epoxy on that plastic peg and leave it to dry overnight Okay, day two. Let's just check that our plastic peg has set. Yeah, that seems fine. So let's give it a bit of a clean because this base here does need to be nice and clean. It's all part of the draw mechanism. You see, as the wheel turns here, it turns the white wheel on the left. The teeth in the middle of there pull the draw along this toothed rail, including the motor. So the motor's moving along with the rest of the draw and pulling out on this rail here. And as it does that, it moves this plastic rail on the left and that attaches to this at the back and that goes into the bit at the top and that opens the plastic door on the front. But notice the rail is only on the left hand side here. There's nothing over on the right at all. I would have thought they'd have had a rail either side to keep it nice and smooth, but no, all the mechanism is being pulled from the left and there's just a plastic roller on the right here that the whole thing is resting on as well as one at the back there. It does seem a little bit prone to failure we're asking too much of this little motor that's on the left of this to pull this whole heavy mechanism out from the inside of the machine but let's move on now to having a look at the tone arm mechanism you can see the tone arm resting at the back here but as the machine is operated it swings out into a more traditional position at the front but the way it swings out is using a motor and the motor uses this belt now I've got no idea whether it needs this right now but since I've got it open I might as well replace it. You can see the belt inside here going around this white wheel but it goes down inside there over the top of the motor itself. So to get to that I'm going to have to remove that plastic cover. There are two screws on the back here that enable me to get it out of the way. However to really properly remove it I'm going to have to unclip all those wires and it just looks like too much hassle. So I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut here it's going to be easy enough getting the belt off the motor because I can see the top of the motor spindle now. So it's just a matter of lifting it over that and then off the wheel. But getting it back in there again is going to be a little bit trickier because I can't see the other side of the large wheel. So I can't really thread it around it properly. The solution I came up with was just a bit of a bodge really. I'll put some tape onto that wheel. That means it's going to be held in position at that point and then I can roll that around to the back so now I know the belt is on the wheel at the back and I can pull the belt pop it on top of the motor and then spin it back round again and remove the tape off the back I'm sure there are some tools for doing this that make it a lot easier but uh, that was just a quick fix and it seemed to work I've got the belt on there now now this particular record player is one of the models that can jump to a specific track and it does this with the help of this double eye sensor that's on the end of the tone arm just in front of the stylus and the way that these systems work is by shining a light down onto the surface of the disc which doesn't really get reflected until it hits the section between tracks which is more of a mirror that bounces the light back into the sensors and it can determine therefore where one track ends and the next one begins and given the dusty condition of the rest of the machine i think it's probably a wise idea before i close it up to blow out those sensors with some compressed air and with that i think i've done everything i can on the inside so let's just pop this whole thing back together and hope for the best and try not to leave too many spare screws over at the end of it pretty complicated thing to take apart fiddly difficult to put back together again as well it is obviously designed not to really come apart some good components in here, but some rubbishy plastic bits as well. A real mixture of a machine. 
And as you can see, the ever so slow draw loading mechanism is now operating as it should do. Well, I say as it should do, there are a couple of issues here. It's quite noisy. I'd imagine it wouldn't be like that when it was new. It's also jerky. And then every now and then it runs into this issue where it just gets stuck. So I took it apart a couple more times just to see if I'd done something wrong. But no, this is as good as it will fit. I think the chassis of the whole machine has somehow got bent and the drawer doesn't quite locate properly anymore. But moving on from that disappointment, let's see if it's actually capable of playing a record. We'll take one from my prized collection of my favourite discs, this one from Leo Sayer. No, I'm kidding. This is one of a selection of discs that I bought from eBay for a very good price just for testing out record players. And if they get scratched, it doesn't matter. You can see that Leo is very reluctant to be the first record played on this turntable. But when we press play, you can see the tone arms moving out. So that's the new belt in operation that we put in there. But then it puts down the stylus at a very unusual position. <laughs> We've got a lot of problems there. We'll unpack those in a moment, but let's get back to the door on the front. I thought this is something simple I can fix. We've just got a bit broken off. I found it inside the bottom of the box. So that tells me that it got broken off in transit again. So I thought I'd just try gluing those two things together. However, there's quite a lot of force applied on that piece of plastic. It runs up and down a rail on the side. And despite the fact that I put it all back in place, the first time I used it, it just snapped straight off again. So that wasn't a massive success. So I think it's time I take a step back and summarize the situation. We've got an automatic door that's hanging off at an angle and has to be opened and closed manually. A turntable platter that scrapes against the side whenever it rotates. A tone arm that's got a mind of its own. Playback. It sounds like a badly tuned AM radio and a draw loading mechanism that's positively indecent and could do with having a bucket of water thrown over it. Now I'm quite sure the stylus being bent like a banana really doesn't help things. However, when looking for a replacement, I found that it costs the same as the whole machine. Now, clearly, there's no point throwing any more good money after bad on a lost cause. And whilst trying to repair this one has been fun, well, sort of, I think it's time I throw in the towel. So there you go. You've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. With this one, well, it was just too far gone to spend any more time, money and effort on. So what about that? A repair video without the payoff. Is that an idea that could work? Yep. Okay. No, apparently it's a terrible idea and I've got to go back and reshoot the ending. So just give me a minute. When we first saw the Pioneer PL88FS, its record playing days were long behind it. Battered and neglected, seemingly beyond any hope of repair, it looked like the only sensible option was to send this one to the recyclers. But thanks to a delusional never give up attitude and long days of hard work, it slowly began to spring back to life. Replacement belts enabled the sophisticated draw loading mechanism to once again glide smoothly and silently. A new stylus that cost more than the whole machine gave it back its voice and the bruised case and snapped plastic was somehow fixed by magic fairies from the future. But all that hard work has paid off as the fully restored turntable now looks just like a photo copied out of a catalogue. But if that restored appearance seems implausible, and it should do, then you won't believe the sound. Tuned and improved, it now sounds better than the day it left the factory. This turntable will be spinning records for years to come, and is destined to become a valuable family heirloom. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.